I'm David O'Connor. I sing in uh, TV Freaks, and I tattoo at Trophy Tattoo in Hamilton. I don't uh, really tend to obsess over too much um, because I find that I spread myself pretty thin throughout tattooing and uh, friendship and music and family and just I tend to have a lot of hobbies, but I mean, the last thing that I can remember that I really became obsessed with was uh, tattooing. And uh, there's just a total world of things that I don't know. And I always, it, it's the same with music where if, if there's a band that has a huge catalog of, of music that is to be discovered, a lot of my favorite bands have copious amounts of, of, of music uh, to discover and I find that that's the same with tattooing whereas the minute you think you know something there's something else that you don't know and that's a real draw to me is the endless uh, pursuit of knowledge um, and just the endless amount of knowledge uh, that is out there for you to, to, to find because you never know it all. I don't like to give away too many secrets because there's always a friend that, you know, you tell about something that you really like and it's kind of a secret and they play it too many times and blow it out and, and ruin it for everyone because it's just been played so many times. And so I tend not to uh, give out too many secret guys, but I think that one person that everyone should know about is Lee Hazelwood. Whether you like country music or not, he's kind of uh, really... Uh, revolutionary kind of producer and writer of songs and even a great musician as well he wrote uh, these boots are made for walking for Nancy Sinatra he you know produced so many cool uh, like 70s country and and kind of um, spaghetti western so sorts of things and just a really good pop uh, producer and singer um, so I think Lee Hazelwood is probably one underground kind of guy that a lot of people don't know about and should know about. My favorite musical object, uh, I don't tend to keep instruments around very often. Um, I either sell them or break them or lose them or something like that. So, I, I mean, my favorite musical object would be the thing that I listen to music on most, which is my, my turntable, I guess. I, love records and I love collecting and listening to records and so I guess you could consider that a musical object, my record player. I wish that I was part of um, the Hot Snakes, uh, it's my favorite band that I can think of and uh, I've really modeled the way that I write songs and play songs and write lyrics and you know after the way that they do it. And I really think that uh, it's very unique. I mean, they do kind of have a, a, a vibe where they steal from like the Wipers, which are, you know, a great band, punk band from the, the 80s uh, and 90s. But uh, I think generally they're very, very unique band and just balls to the wall, you know, rock and roll, punk kind of stuff. So I really wish that I was part of that band, although that in saying that, it's like I can't imagine that band with any without any of the people that are in it. So if they could somehow find a place for me to like play triangle or, you know, auxiliary percussion, I'd be happy with that. I think if I did make a decision to be a musician, it was really early in life, and it was because the things that I was seeing, the the music that I was listening to was. A kind of uh, counterculture to what what else was happening around my life when I was a kid and you know just hearing swear words and a Guns N' Roses record that my dad or that my brother had um, was just like you know it was cool to me it was the same as tattooing where it's like something that's sort of you know out there and uh, weird so I mean I I guess I just kind of liked the idea of being on the outside and not uh, not being mainstream and not you not uh, 
not caring about my studies or my school or whatever it was. was music was something that was productive, but uh, kind of fringe at the same time. My dream band lineup would be uh, Nathan Berger on drums, uh, Kevin Bell on bass, uh, TJ Charlton on guitar, and uh, myself on vocals. I don't, uh, I actually, I do have one t-shirt that, if you've ever seen pictures of me through the last 10 years, you could probably tell that this t-shirt would not fit me anymore. It's a small Hot Snakes t-shirt that is probably comes up to here now. And uh, it's from the first time that I got to see Hot Snakes in Toronto. I, I saw them uh, I saw them play at Lee's Palace and I kind of heard about this band and I was listening to the records and I begged all my friends to come with me and I was like, I promise you guys that this will be amazing and you're going to love it. Nobody came, but I, you know, it was my first year living in Toronto alone as a student, and I kind of ventured my way out and had a fake ID, got into the show, and it really changed the way that I looked at music and the way that I looked at punk. So that kind of, I kept that shirt even though it will never, ever fit me again. Um, so that one means a lot to me. It just kind of sits in my drawer. If I wasn't playing music, I would probably still be doing some sort of art, uh, painting, drawing, illustration, tattooing. Um, but my first love was music. And uh, so, I mean, that, that kind of propelled me into art, seeing album covers and, you know, even as far as like skateboarding and stuff goes, like that's all, it all kind of is one thing. So I can't imagine removing music from that equation, but I guess I would be you know, making some sort of visual art. I would like to score uh, a number of Stanley Kubrick movies, but uh, The Shining, I think, would be a really fun one to do because it's kind of diabolical. And although most of Kubrick's movies are scored perfectly anyways, it's, it's one of those ones that uh, I would like to try my hand at. It could be like my dirty little secret of not ever having it get out there because I tend to think that like covering songs or uh, redoing things or rehashing movies and stuff, if you can't do it better, then there's no reason to really do it at all. But uh, I mean, as a little project, I think The Shining would be a fun one to do. My favorite venue to play uh, is the St. Hollywood in Hamilton. Uh, it just seems like it's kind of like the place that is home for for TV freaks, for sure, and a lot of punk bands. Uh, it's one of those places that isn't driven by the business. They're not trying to, you know, be your girlfriend because they think that you'll have a good draw. It's, uh, the people there really, you know, are on the ground floor of punk and on the ground floor of just like underground music in Hamilton for the sake of the, of the actual passion and interest that they have for it rather than any sort of business motivated thing. And, and it's just really kind of home for us. The thing that affects me lyrically most is my luck and uh, things that happen to me and things that, uh, things that bother me and things that I tend to not be in control of in my life and things that I'm at the mercy of, uh, just, you know, just life itself and the way that it goes and the way that it doesn't always go the way that you want it to go. Um, so my bad luck or the bad things that happen to me in my life are kind of the thing that influences my music the most. Um, the song that I kind of feel like encompasses my life the most and sort of uh, really explains what I'm trying to convey musically is I Can't Win, which is, uh, funny enough, is the first song that TV Freaks ever wrote. And it's kind of about the bad luck in my life. And no matter how hard I'm trying 
it always seems to be some sort of like supernatural force working against me that causes uh, strings to break while we're playing or me to drop coffee on the painting I've been working on or uh, for me to <laughs> park my car where I'll get a ticket or to be smoking a joint where I shouldn't be when there's a cop. There's always something uh, that seems like I've got some sort of dark force working against me so I can't win. Uh, so, sort of a foreshadowing into what the band would become. I think that the future of music is probably a more of the same and more of different genres being mixed together to make something new. There's always that old adage that it, you can't do anything new, especially it's like 2015 now and it's all been done. I don't think it's all been done. There's definitely electronic stuff that's not been done. Uh, and I mean, I guess that you could say that that is the future of music, but if I were hopeful, I'd like to think that uh, some sort of, uh, you know, collaboration of punk and rock and whatever it could be, like just adding new things, adding little bits of things to other things to make something new because, you know, there wouldn't be, you know, Devo is a very good example where it's, it's all different things into one, but there's nothing like Devo. So whenever you think that everything's been done, there's always something that pops up that uh, is new and exciting.